is web-based and covers all types of information relating to the curing and treatment of spinal cord injury. An appointed specialist checks the information submitted and classifies it before it is published. In this way, all the current information on the treatment of spinal cord injury is easily accessible from a single source, something that would have saved Oedhra and Hrapnodur a huge amount of valuable time and effort had it been available earlier. After the Council of Europe and the WHO had declared their interest in establishing the data bank and requested that Iceland take the initiative, a long period of preparatory work would follow. Committees were set up and work groups given the responsibility of finding the best format for such a data bank. Finally, the project ended right where it had started, with Oida Gudjonsdottir. Her first task was to appoint Dr. Lawrence Johnston as supervisor of the data bank. A biochemist, Dr. Johnston has spent years in research, including the area of spinal cord injury. In addition, he is a leading spokesperson for the organization Paralyzed Veterans of America. It's a different world. We've really become a global community and people get online and they, uh, they have a spinal cord injury and uh, often people, patients with, with the spinal cord injury are going to uh, ask their physician about, what about this? And I think that's healthy. You know, I think uh, healthcare is a partnership between the, uh, the patient and uh, the physician. And for too many years, it, uh, the information just came from top down. And now the, uh, the patient uh, can educate himself. I believe there is sufficient information to start the process of curing spinal cord injury. There is a wealth of information available. It's just scattered here and there all over the world. We simply need to collect it. Oyder and Hrapnilda's ceaseless search for a cure has seen them travel all over the world. They went to China to meet Zhang, who later operated on Hrapnilder in Iceland. They have been to Russia for electrolysis treatment, to France for laser acupuncture, and to England for treatment with a spiritual teacher. The epic struggle of these two women has won the admiration of all who have come to know them. Their example has shown that ordinary people are capable of the most extraordinary achievements. In recognition, the President of Iceland awarded Oether the Order of the Falcon, and the Icelandic magazine New Life chose Oether its Woman of the Year. This is naturally something we can all have as a guiding light which is to be willing to challenge convention and never to give up. This has been done in the past and has changed the course of human history. You know, I spent years in Washington, D.C., and I think the biggest contributions are often made by the parents of someone with spinal cord injury. You get, after a while, you get immersed with, oh, this is the way it's supposed to go, and someone, a parent of a new individual with spinal cord injury, comes in and let's change things. What are the problems? And it just infuses so much new energy. And her contributions are going to be immense. In my opinion, Oda has won a great victory. It's a victory of one voice that was heard crying in the wilderness. This is what has happened in the case of Oda and Hrapilda, and I find that admirable. It was a happy mother and daughter who met Zhang Zemin, the Chinese president in Reykjavik in 2002. For them, it was an opportunity to thank him for having allowed Zhang to travel to Iceland and operate on Hrapnildur. This amazing story, and indeed others like it, are proof that hope for a cure for spinal cord injury is not a mere dream, but a real possibility. 
er handfónið stefna sem hefur verið gangi. The policy now in effect is a completely useless one. The therapy available tells you that you will never walk again. Clearly, this is a violation of human rights in the case of young people with spinal cord injury. If you're eight years old and paralyzed, they tell you to go home and learn to live with it. But if you're 80 and have cancer, you're almost hounded to the grave with treatments. Thank you.